You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Pauki box. I already did a review or a couple of reviews about these products because we're having different versions and this is the ultimate edition, like the most expensive and the most beefcake edition out there. But what is the Pauki box? The Pauki box is basically an Android box with some pre-installed firmware or software, how you want to say it, and we can do a lot of great things with it. But okay, so this is the most expensive version. There is only one big bummer with this. Yeah, we're going to get more, let's say, storage capacity. But when you're looking at the controllers and stuff like that, we're still going to get a lot of the same stuff like I've shown you in a different video or the previous models. They did give us a different kind of box. I like it, it's pretty cool. It looks very similar like the Super Console X, but we're also going to open it up to see if they changed something out. Inside the box, what are we going to get? Of course, a remote itself. Some of these devices have dual boot, but it's something we can take a close look at it later. Also, I must say that there are a lot of different versions out there. Some are using newer version of our so newer version of Android. What the hell happened to you? So they're giving you, they give you, so going your hop I can talk to you. Brain fart, like my second channel, Wicked Brain Fart, by the way. So we're going to get is a very nice manual, like high quality toilet paper with. And this smells really chemical, but a good explanation how everything works. Here we're going to get the power supply, the 12 volt power supply that we're going to need for powering on the device itself. Do I say it correctly? The power 12 volt? Yeah, 12 volt, one amp. And of course, we're going to get the freaking horrible controllers. So what I didn't really understand is like we're having different versions. Why not like get the cheap versions with no controllers because these controllers are so bad that you don't want to even play with it but you're going to get the option like having the supreme edition with the biggest capacity or storage capacity and also going to get better controllers controllers we're going to talk about it later hdmi cable and we can make a projector out of this thing pretty cool but let's take a close look at the controller and of course we're going to take a close look at the box itself so first of all, they are not chemical. Normally like these fake controls are really chemical, it's plastic, and that's not the case. Shoulder buttons, they have quite a short travel. These like the back have a very long travel, but they are feeling really horrible. If you remove the cover, we're going to get the dongle because each control has their own dongle. Two AAA batteries. The joystick feel very slippery, slippery, slippery. But the thing is, like, they are, these are just horrible analog sticks. I don't like them at all. The D-pad, you can already hear it. They are just freaking awful. I've seen this before and I don't understand. I keep saying and repeating myself, stop selling these freaking awful controllers. A, B, X, Y. The only thing I do like about it, actually, you're going to get in turbo function. In the controller. So that is super convenient with schmips. And I love myself some schmip. So let's get some batteries and let's try these horrible, shitty controllers. All right, so let's take a close look at the Pauki box itself. It weighs almost nothing. It's very in cheap feel. They did an improvement over here with some cooling, but I was like, when I keep seeing and repeating myself with like the previous models, we need the cooling at the top. And please give me your exit fan because this passive cooling, I don't know if it's going to be enough for, and let's say if you want to use this thing for years to come. At the back, we're going to get the AV out. I tried with the Super Conflict, didn't work with the MU Alex software. We're having here the internet connection to RG45, HDMI input for the power supply. What I do like about these boxes, we're going to get an actually on and off switch. Yeah, there was not a lot. The CF card over here, like this is the biggest and the most expensive edition you can get. So let's take a close look at the card itself. We're going to get the 256 gigabytes. So this is a really big card. And of course, we're going to get the two USB ports. Yeah, nothing really special. I do like the color of the box. My favorite color, but it looks kind of cool. All right, so let's take a close look at the inside. I already removed the feet at the bottom to speed up the progress. And the only thing that we need to do is removing the three screws. And I can remember there were some parts clicked together, but then overall getting this thing turned down is really easy. I think the most easiest. TV box to basically disassemble. Okay, so this is the part that they clicked. Be very gentle. Two part shell, nothing really special. Let's put these screws in here. 
don't want to lose these. So this is it. And I'm guessing that all the main boards are exactly the same when it comes to the way they built it. They're just reusing old pieces of technology. So another thing that if you think about it, like normally you would say, hey, it's e-weight, let's throw it away. But yeah, you're just reusing it like this. And with the Ultimate Edition, I wish they more like gives us the options to, let's say if having three different versions, not only for the capacity of the SD card, but you can have the, also the option to get better performance. So we're going to get the two chips over here, the RAM chips, in total one gigabyte. Yep, that doesn't matter which version you buy. Then we're having here the cooling element. It's like this tiny cooling element. I'm not going to remove it because they use, I think, with thermal glue. If I'm going to remove it, I need to get myself some new glue. The Wi-Fi antenna over here because we're having Wi-Fi capabilities. But that's it, folks. The Wi-Fi chip is over here. The only thing I don't like about it, I'm only going to get two USB ports. For two player it's enough of course, but if you want to use it like a dual boot or you want to do some more controllers, you need to have a USB hub. But then overall, let's take a close look at the dates. Is there any information over there? It says the F905. That's what you're going to get with the chipset. Let's see, this is the S905M. Oh, guess what? It's the same mainboard like the Super Console X. Yep, 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 yep. But these boards are just very old and I wouldn't expect that they are producing these anymore. Already mentioned like, they're like old tech. They're saving them from the e-waste and make something out of it. Something I just wanted to show you that I completely forget to mention if you didn't see it already. It's like with this casing, they are just covering up the digital output board. We have seen it before with other boxes, but that's fine. I just wanted to show you here. Like that's kind of funny in my opinion. So why are you doing that? Okay, so let's put it back together and let us have, how would you could just put it? Oh, that's the way how we need to put it together. <laughs> let's click it. Click it. Click it. Ah! All right, guys. So it's time for the nerdy wicked chit chat. So the brand is Pokebox, type the ultimate. So the chipset itself is the S905M, then it's a quad core with a Mali 450 GPU and only one gigabyte of RAM. The software version is MU-ELEC 3.9, storage 256 gigabyte on the SD card and internal only eight gigabyte. So when you're looking at the specs, there's nothing ultimate about it. A little bit disappointing, if you ask me. All right, so the SD card has been entered in the system. That's the only thing that we need to do. Let's boot it up. And if everything works, we're going to get the Pokebox intro. And then we're going to boot up the ME Alex software. Within, I say, a minute or so, it will boot up. So it's quite fast. I'm curious how long it will take if you're going to get like the biggest collection. Here we can see like it's loading up the final page and it's done. So when booted up, we're going to get the basic boot up theme with Emu Alec. A little bit of a bummer in my opinion. Pressing start, we can change out a lot of things. Controller settings, UI settings, and also if you want to change out the layout, we can do it over here. You can see like it's running on 1080p. Set a boot up, RetroArch, we can choose that if you want to mess around with RetroArch from the start. Updates, downloads, and here having the system information. You can change out the time zones and other things. But what I like about the Emulic software in combination with Android that we're having so much options when it comes to old school, but up to PlayStation 1, most of the time runs just fine on these devices. Take consideration N64 and the higher end stuff that is very hard or even difficult for a cheap box to emulate. That will be always the case with most of these systems. It's still a very cheap old Android box, slept with some extra software on. But don't get me wrong, you can still play a lot of different stuff. PlayStation Portable, we also tried to start up that, but you will see like it will struggle with some games. Two dimensional games, sometimes it will like play the games with full speed without too many glitches. But just wanted to give you a quick look when you can see like we're having so much different stuff including a favorite list that is very convenient if you ask me. But okay guys, so I just wanted to deep dive into the high-end stuff. The reason why, because all the low-end stuff will run just fine. NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, Sega CD, you call it, it will run just fine. 
But when it comes to this, PlayStation 1, stuff like that, that is the question if it will run fine. Oh boy, this game playing with the D-pad or this, what kind of a D-pad needs to be, it's really horrible. But you can see like this game runs very well, even the hardest emulated games will run fine. When you're pressing both joystick at the same time, we go opening up a retro arc. Basically this is what is running on the back end with all the emulators. Here you can make a quick load, quick save, you can even start recording what I don't recommend with stuff or in a box like this. Change out the controls if you have any problems and stuff like that. It's a controller. <sighs> Next up let's try another PlayStation 1 game, just to make sure if everything runs like it should be. I think the Gran Turismo will run fine, it will not be a problem at all. Ooh. Paul, are you just keep blocking my stuff or what? Yeah! See, he gives me answer. No, no freaking hung hugging. Go away. Oh, that was lucky. Next up, seek a Dreamcast. The power key box does have the option to go into the retro arc menu when you're pressing both a joystick at the same time. And here we can, let's say, tinker with the settings if you want to improve, or better said, if you want to use different resolutions. But in overall, like, you can say like with the 640x480 resolution that we're going to get with the Flycast emulator, it's a maximum. Because if you want to try even like 720p or 1080p, don't bother, because it's not powerful enough. But what I find quite interesting with the widescreen hack, if you want to have like widescreen with some games, we are able to do this by only putting this on on, reset the system and we have the option to play all the games in the widescreen if it has been supported. Okay, so this game is really demanding. Let's see how fast loading time and how are they running on the PO. PO. Okay. Mm. Oh, I can see that it's slightly having a minor hiccup here and there. The performance itself is not bad for a G-Box. But here you can see like a lot of glitching going on. If you can even see it on the recording. So let's try a more demanding game. It's still Schmup. There's a lot of 3D animations and running on 60 FPS stable. So you can see that even with a cheap box like this, you can still run a lot of games very well. So surprisingly, the system seems to be running way better than on Super Console X. Yeah. 
Next up, Mortal Kombat. Let's see how it runs on the Pokebox. So Mortal Kombat 1 is for me like the ultimate test if you want to play some main games. But Killer Instinct and the really high demanding games like Tekken, Tech, stuff like that from MAME doesn't work on the Pauky box. We need to have, okay, let's say, a beefy PC for that if you want to run those main games. Okay, what just happened? I hit the guy straight up in the face. Oh crap. That was my doing. Ah, uh, wicked, you're messing it up. You're going to get your ass kicked by Scorpion. Freeze, bitches. Absolutely, indeed. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. No! No! <laughs> yeah! But sadly, if you want to play Mortal Kombat 2 and does not run like it should be, you can hear a lot of interference in the audio. So Mortal Kombat 1 is the only arcade game that you can play from the MK series. Oh boy, this is really bad. Ow, 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 ow. Next up, let's try the Cruise in the UZ game. That doesn't run well on many systems. I did hear like a minor drop. Oh, here it goes. But when it comes to N64, I did notice like with the higher end stuff, the Super Console like, PC edition, like the really expensive and beefy machines, those will run the games like Cruise and USA without any problem because it had enough power. And these cheap Android boxes, nah, it will be a mixed bag with N64. But when you're looking at the first generation of games, this is what I mean with mixed bag because this works just fine. D D D Kong farting. <laughs> of course, we also have the option to play some NES games. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I really hate playing like this. You can switch the display so you can put, let's say, this display as main. It's all up. To you how you want to play there are options to switch between the displays but personally i just hate it okay guys so the pokey box the biggest the baddest but in the end, when you're looking at the specification, when you're looking at the things it can do, it's exactly the same like all the other versions. So what I don't understand is like selling all of these different editions, especially when it comes to the casing. And it's just the same hardware in the inside. So yeah, let me know what do you think of this. What do you think of the overall performance? It's a very cheap box. I do like the presentation of it. The controllers are like freaking awful. And I'm more like just sell them without controllers if you don't want to give like decent ones because this is not the experience that you want to have. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that bell, become on the Wicked family because I will see you.